Our base case is 650,000, but that base case was set uh, before the SEC approved uh, the Bitcoin ETFs. We are more convinced now that our bull case of 1.5 million by 2030, Bitcoin is backed by the largest computer network in the world, and therefore it is the safest cryptocurrency or crypto asset out there. It has not been hacked. The base layer has not been hacked. I don't think any other crypto asset can say that. On August 23rd, Bitcoin briefly surged above $62,000, climbing from an opening price of $61,000. This spike followed Fed Chair Jerome Powell's announcement that it might be time to lower interest rates. The news reignited interest in Bitcoin as a potential hedge against market volatility and inflation. While this development offers a positive outlook, Bitcoin's journey to new highs could remain unpredictable due to possible regulatory challenges and market fluctuations. Amid this uncertainty, Kathy Wood has shared an optimistic view on Bitcoin's future. She forecasts a base case of $650,000 and a bull case of $1.5 million by 2030. Despite the current market volatility, Wood underscores Bitcoin's growing importance in emerging markets and its considerable growth potential. Her insights offer valuable perspective on Bitcoin's future, urging investors to consider its long-term potential. For more details, watch clips from Kathy Wood's interview. Stop. You don't have time. Don't miss out this 2025 bull run. Educate yourself first ahead of the crowd. We have created the ultimate step-by-step -step crypto cheat guide that will guide you this bull run. Unlock the secrets of crypto and make smarter investments today. Now by clicking on the link below to get your exclusive copy just under $10. Why do you think that older people are less receptive to Bitcoin, like Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger, so against it? And it seems like young people love it. Yeah. Anyone over the age of 50, for the most part, either they don't know about it or they're very skeptical. Why yeah. do you think that is? I think partly it's technology, that there's discomfort. You know, Warren Buffett ha ha famously has said, if I don't understand it and I don't understand most technology, I'm not going to invest in it. Um, now, he did invest in IBM kind of at the wrong time. So that proved, uh, um, you know, to be, to reinforce what he was saying. However, he, he didn't give up. He did invest in Apple and that's been, you know, a grand slam for him. So, but very little interest in technology and a lot of people pay attention to him, mm -hmm. especially more value oriented investors, um, where, you know, in, in technology, you've got very often you have to invest aggressively. A company has to invest aggressively in the short term, forgo short term profitability in order to be able to scale longer term in this new technology. Value stocks tend to be, um, you know, what you see is what you get immediately. Uh, so there's a little bit more faith in the future, I would say, when it comes to tech investing. And, you know, maybe, I mean, I'm certainly over 50 and, uh, you know, I'm all about technology. So a bit of maybe an a exception there. Um, but uh, I do think there's just a general discomfort, especially because they lived through the tech and telecom bubble and bust. And they weren't looking at it with the perspective I just shared with you, which is, okay, these seeds were planted back then. They weren't ready. And so if you weren't doing the kind of research we're doing in terms of trying to figure out when technologies are ready for prime time, then they were going to get hurt. And a lot of people did get hurt back then. And so that's, that's a, a memory. Uh, losing money is, uh, is painful. It's, uh, it, it, you know, I, I know there are studies, you probably know the studies where it's much more painful to lose money than it is enjoyable to make. Yeah, I think the risk reward on that was the the gain of a dollar was equivalent to like the loss of two dollars. So or like the loss like feels that. twice as worse as like gaining a dollar. Yes. Uh, the third yeah. way to think of Bitcoin. So we've got um, technology, global monetary system, and a new asset class which is why we are really excited. And, you know, the ARC 21 shares Bitcoin ETF is a, a good example. Um, we have enjoyed tremendous inflows. And I'd like to think it is because 
We wrote our first piece on Bitcoin in 2014. Uh, we've earned our stripes. Uh, we had our first white paper with Art Laffer. Could Bitcoin serve the three rolls of money? That was 2015. And then we wrote our second white paper, Bitcoin, ringing the bell for a new asset class. That was 2016. And finally, the SEC approved um, earlier this year, uh, a Bitcoin e or many Bitcoin yeah. ETFs. Uh, so w we think institutions have not moved very aggressively thus far into Bitcoin. Why? It's because they need to do their due diligence. They need to. We've we've spent ten years doing this, so we're very comfortable. Um, you know, if you look at uh, BlackRock, for example, until I'm going to say three years ago. Um, uh, BlackRock was pointing to the, you know, negatives associated with Bitcoin. And then, of course, there was the conversion. And fantastic, fantastic. I think BlackRock has done a lot for this movement of Bitcoin into a new asset class. But we've barely got begun on that. Wood believes the chances of a bullish Bitcoin scenario have increased significantly now that the SEC has approved Bitcoin ETFs. She sees Bitcoin as having reached a point of singularity, where it has become unstoppable and is increasingly vital as a safeguard in unstable economies, particularly in developing markets. While Bitcoin's corrections can be severe, they are becoming less drastic as the asset matures, and its volatility is expected to decrease over time. Would also address the potential risks posed by quantum computing, noting that acknowledging these threats is a crucial first step and expressing confidence that researchers are actively working on solutions. Despite potential short-term volatility, Wood maintains a positive outlook on Bitcoin, emphasizing its growing importance and potential for significant growth. She advises investors to take a long-term view. For more insights, check out additional clips from Kathy Wood's interview. Uh, what price targets do you have for Bitcoin? Everyone uh, loves this. Yes, we are in print. Uh, uh, our base case is 650000 but that base case was set uh, before the SEC approved uh, the Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, and so uh, we are more convinced now that our bull case of 1.5 million by 2030 is the, the, the more likely case. Do you think Bitcoin is currently a singularity or do you think it will be that in the future? And when will that be? So when you say singularity as it relates to Bitcoin, what do you mean? Like you can't contain it at a certain point. Oh, I it's... think we're, we've passed escape velocity. There's no way to shut Bitcoin down. Um, and China tried. And all the activity that was in China just migrated. There's no oversight. It, there's no throat to choke. And it has proliferated to such an extent and is serving a really important role, especially in emerging markets, where people, you know, of various countries, if their leaders either don't understand economics or there's corruption and um, they lose purchasing power and wealth, you know, to the tune of 50 percent in a very short period of time, e even this year. Egypt, I think it was the beginning of March, devalued the Egyptian pound by 40%. And so having an insurance policy like Bitcoin is really important in emerging markets. So the bear case for Bitcoin isn't even that it could just go nowhere, but that it will 20x in five years. I mean, you've seen the corrections are violent because mm -hmm. it is so early and so young. Um the the corrections used to be 95%. Now they're more like 75%. That's a lot. So I don't want anyone to think that it's straight up and to the right mm -hmm. because the corrections are pretty violent. Um, they're getting less so. And I think as Bitcoin moves more into mainstream investing, the volatility will go down dramatically. Uh, so it's not like we're saying it won't go down. Um, it will. It's a new asset class. And there are a lot of, I would say, uh, weak holders. They get in because of FOMO, so fear of missing out. And then they lose 20% and then they get out. You know, they cut their losses. So that exacerbates, moves down. So there is one thing that 
the Bitcoin community is watching, and that is quantum computing. But ha as I always say, when it comes to risks, half of the solution is understanding the problem. And so now developers are thinking in terms of quantum proofing. Mm -hmm. uh, so th so I, I think that is something we should consider seriously. And I am happy that, you know, the developers are considering it seriously. Bitcoin investors may soon find relief as traders become optimistic that the Federal Reserve will confirm interest rate cuts at the upcoming Jackson Hole Summit. Currently, Bitcoin is trading within a narrowing range, with $662,000 acting as a key resistance level. According to Coinglass, a new block of sell orders has formed at $61,435, helping to stabilize the price on the 4-hour chart. Traders have noticed Bitcoin attempting to break through resistance at the 200-period simple moving average. A close above this level could propel Bitcoin to $64,000 to $65,000, but if it gets rejected, some consolidation is expected, as noted by popular trader Elliot in a recent post. Meanwhile, Kathy Wood has shed light on why some older investors remain cautious about Bitcoin, citing their experiences with the tech bubble and subsequent financial losses, which have made them more risk-averse. In contrast, younger investors are more open to Bitcoin, seeing it as a promising new asset class, a global monetary system, and groundbreaking technology. Wood also pointed out that institutions are gradually warming up to Bitcoin, as evidenced by significant inflows into Bitcoin ETFs, indicating growing mainstream acceptance. Despite current price challenges, Bitcoin's increasing adoption by both retail and institutional investors suggests a solid foundation for future growth. As we wrap up, what are your thoughts on this interview? Please share them in the comments below. For more Daily Dose crypto news, check out these two awesome videos on your screen. Click now and we will see you on the next video.